There are gardening methods that vanish with time, and then there are those that refuse to die because they work too well to be forgotten. In the 1800s, before synthetic fertilizers or store-bought soil amendments, farmers relied on a soil trick so effective that it produced faster growth than compost. It was later frowned upon and pushed aside as new products took over, but the truth is this method still has the power to outgrow compost in your garden today. The secret lies not in something expensive or exotic, but in understanding the way soil life works when given the right fuel. Before compost piles became standard, farmers needed a way to quickly feed their crops without waiting months for organic matter to rot down. They discovered that soaking weeds, grass clippings, and kitchen scraps in water created a fermented liquid packed with nutrients. This dark, strong-smelling brew was sometimes called manure tea or plant fermentation water, and it acted as a direct infusion of soluble minerals and microbial life. While compost slowly breaks down over time, these teas delivered plant-ready nutrients in days. The process worked because fermentation breaks down complex organic matter into simpler forms like nitrates, phosphates and potassium salts. These were released into the liquid and became immediately available for plant roots. Gardeners back then didn't understand the chemistry the way we do now, but they saw the results. Faster growth, greener leaves and more productive harvests. The recipe is simple and requires no money, just patience and a bucket. Take a five-gallon bucket and fill it halfway with soft green materials such as weeds, grass clippings or vegetable peels. Add a handful of manure if you have it, as this speeds fermentation, but it isn't necessary. Fill the bucket to the top with water, ideally rainwater, and leave it uncovered but shaded for two to three weeks. Stir it every few days to allow oxygen to mix in. The liquid will turn dark brown and develop a strong odour, which is a sign that the microbes are working. Once it's ready, you'll want to strain out the solids and dilute the liquid before applying it to your plants. A safe ratio is one part fermented liquid to ten parts water, though heavy feeders like tomatoes, cucumbers and squash can handle stronger doses at one part to five. Apply directly at the base of plants every two weeks and you'll notice an immediate response in growth and fruiting. Compost is excellent for long-term soil health, structure and microbial diversity, but it works slowly. Nutrients in compost are locked within carbon-based material and need time to be released. Fermented liquid, on the other hand, skips that delay. Nutrients are already dissolved and carried in water, making them instantly accessible. Think of it as the difference between a slow-cooked meal and a quick energy drink. Compost builds steady, lasting fertility, but fermented liquid acts like a rapid boost, especially during peak growth stages. For crops that require large bursts of energy during flowering and fruiting, this liquid often outpaces compost alone. One of the reasons this method fell out of favour was due to hygiene concerns. Back in the 1800s, farmers sometimes used raw manure and waste without proper handling, which could, you know, lead to contamination. These days, we can adapt the method more safely by focusing on plant-based ingredients and making sure everything is properly diluted. If you do decide to include manure, always let the fermentation run its full course and avoid applying it to leafy greens that will be eaten raw. Instead, it's best to use it on fruiting crops 
or apply early enough in the season so that rain and sun can further cleanse the plants before harvest. Another important step is to avoid overuse. Because the liquid is highly concentrated, pouring it on undiluted can actually burn roots. So stick with the 1 to 10 ratio for general feeding, and only adjust after you've had a good look at how your plants respond. Ah, tomatoes, they truly stand out as one of the best examples. You see, a diluted dose of this fermented liquid applied every two weeks can double the flowering clusters and lead to a rather heavy fruit set. And cucumbers, well, they respond quite strongly too, producing longer vines and a steady flush of fruit. Corn, being another heavy feeder, develops thicker stalks and fuller ears when fed in this way. Even leafy crops like kale and chard they show deeper green foliage almost overnight. Quite remarkable, isn't it? Now, if you happen to have a small orchard, those young fruit trees can benefit as well. Simply apply the diluted liquid around the drip line to encourage strong vegetative growth and early fruiting in their second or third year. It's a simple yet effective method. With the rising costs of fertilizers and soil amendments, this zero-cost method is certainly worth revisiting. It requires nothing more than weeds you would normally throw away, a bucket, and water. It reduces waste, keeps nutrients cycling in your own garden, and delivers results that compost alone often can't match in speed. Instead of viewing compost and this trick as rivals, it's best to see them as partners. Compost lays the foundation for long-term soil health, while fermented liquid provides the immediate push plants need during those demanding growth stages. This banned soil trick from the 1800s may have been forgotten by most, but it still holds power for anyone willing to bring it back into practice. It costs nothing, transforms garden waste into a potent fertilizer, and delivers results that can surprise even experienced growers. Start with a single bucket, try it on a patch of your crops, and watch how quickly the difference becomes clear. If you found this guide valuable, do make sure to subscribe to Soil Doctor and share this with fellow gardeners who are serious about unlocking forgotten methods that still work today.